I'm a self-taught software engineer and taught myself to code about five years ago. And there was one thing in particular that really held me back from learning to code as fast as I could have. And I think that a lot of people are in this situation to where they're trying to teach themselves to code and they're really struggling. And I think that often they can think that maybe they're just not smart enough to code. I know I had that conception when I was coming into it. I felt like, you know, I don't come from a traditional computer science background. I don't really see myself as like crazy smart. And I think that there's a perception that to be a developer or a software engineer or someone that writes code, you have to be this like, you know, crazy wizard genius. And I think that that is definitely far from the truth. And, you know, it really doesn't require you to be crazy intelligent. It doesn't require you to be crazy good at math. And I think that for the most part, most people can learn to code. Now, is there probably a baseline of intelligence that's needed to learn to code? Yeah, I'm sure there is, but I don't think it's nearly as high as what most people kind of think it is when they're just kind of getting into this field. And, you know, I, I know that for me, early on, there were still videos that I would watch. And I'd be like, I have 0% idea what this guy was talking about this entire video talking about different data structures and algorithms and stuff like that. So while I don't think it necessarily requires this, you know, absurd level of intellectual ability to learn to code, I still think that you're going to run into those situations to when you're starting out, you're going to hear something and you're going to have no idea what they're talking about. And it's going to be confusing and it's going to be difficult. So I don't want this to sound like, you know, it's just going to be a walk in the park to learn to code because it is hard. And you should be prepared for it to be hard. But I also don't think that it should be out of reach for most people. And I think that if you take an approach that actually works, then you're going to struggle much less to learn to code. And I can't tell you what's necessarily going to work best for you. But what I can tell you is what worked best for me as like an average guy kind of breaking into tech and, you know, becoming a full-time developer a handful of years ago. So with that, what was the biggest mistake for me? when learning to code. Well, that was just trying to get through as much content as possible, as fast as possible. I had this misconception that if I just went through as much content as I can, and I got through all the content, that that means I'm going to learn so much. When in reality, this led to me just kind of like coding along with tutorials and just rushing through content and not actually learning the material. And I think this can be particularly difficult because there are so many, and I'm one of the contributors to it. There's so many content creators out there having tutorials on, you know, create this project in React, create this project in Angular, and, you know, this is a full course on this, full course on that. So much content out there, and you might feel like you, you need to get through all this content to learn, when in reality, I think that you can take a much different approach and learn actually much quicker. And after, you know, a couple months of really kind of spinning my wheels, not learning a ton, I changed my approach and actually started learning much, much better. So there's kind of like a three-step process that I follow that really helps me learn new technologies really well to this day. And it's kind of the process that I started using when learning to code that really helps me out rather than just you know, coding along with, with tutorials. So the first step of this three-step process is watching just a general overview video on the technology and kind of learn a bit about just overall how this technology works as well as where it fits in to a technology stack. So recently in my job, we are thinking about switching to a new React router. So I'm kind of learning new technologies and kind of seeing where these technologies will fit in. So to start that, I might just watch a couple overview videos on some different routers and what might make sense and what their general use cases are. So if you're wanting to learn React or Next.js, I would probably start with just a general overview video on what it is, where it fits in the tech stack and why this technology might be useful. And you can also figure this information out on the documentation, but I tend to be a little bit more of a kind of visual learner. So that's kind of my starting place for something. And then number two, I will read the documentation on whatever technology it is 
and do the starter project if they have one. So for React JS, I know at reactdev.learn, I know that they have like just all the main concepts of React that the React team thinks it's important for you to understand. And then once you do that, they also have like just the starter project. And this is very common for many technologies to have. They have like core concepts in their documentation of like getting started. And then they also have like a getting started project. I would read that documentation from cover to cover. And while you're doing that, make sure to actually like practice what you're learning. So what I would do when I was learning to code and say I was learning JavaScript, while I was going through like a more conceptual part of a tutorial on a piece of paper, I would write down questions that I thought that I should be able to answer after watching that tutorial. So on a piece of paper, on the left side of the piece of paper, I would write like a question and maybe it's like, what is a promise in JavaScript? And then on the right side of piece of paper, I would write the answer to that. And I would go through that tutorial until I had maybe 10 or so questions. But then after that, I would stop and I would cover the right side of the piece of paper, the, the part that had the answers to the questions. And I would quiz myself, okay, what is a promise in JavaScript? And I would have to verbalize that and speak that out to myself. And then I would go to the next question. How does set timeout work in JavaScript? And I would verbalize that. And by creating this like study guide, as I was going through these courses, especially like the, the conceptual parts of these courses, it really helped me learn the material rather than just getting through all this content. After watching just a general overview on how the technology works and how it fits in, I would read the documentation and kind of do the starter project. But while you're kind of reading that documentation, make yourself like a study guide or a quiz or something like that to actually force yourself to kind of recall the information that you're trying to learn. I, this helped me a ton when I was learning various things. And I know in my, my first interview, I, I basically applied to a bunch of different jobs and got like one interview. And in that interview, I really surprised the, the engineer interviewing me because I just, I was quizzing myself on all this stuff. So I had like a really good recall on the questions that he was asking me in which at one point he's like, are you like reading off of a prompt or something? Or how do you know all this right off the top of your head? And it's because I took this approach when kind of studying and stuff. So number two, read the documentation, make yourself like a study guide, quiz yourself, and then do the starter project if they do indeed have one. And then number three, this is where I think the most kind of practical learning really comes in. Build your own stuff and you know, this doesn't necessarily need to be on your own at first. You might start with doing it alongside a tutorial. Now, the important thing, if you do decide to do it alongside a tutorial, so like I have tutorials here on my YouTube channel, if you were to follow one of my tutorials, make sure that you still like apply yourself and try to do the stuff that the person in the tutorial is doing. So like in one of my tutorials, if I I take the first 40 minutes of the tutorial to set up authentication with Superbase. Then once I kind of get through that process, go back and start over, try to do everything on your own to see if you can actually then, you know, build that authentication with Superbase without just coding along with the tutorial to see if you're actually learning anything or if you're just kind of mindlessly coding along to get done with a project so you can like check that box. And while you're doing it, make sure you're, you know, refer to documentation, use chat GPT, all the stuff that I used to actually build the tutorial in the first place. So don't just code along, make sure that you kind of see how they do it and then do it for yourself. And then maybe after you do the tutorial and you kind of code alongside the tutorial, go build your own projects or build the same tutorial, but all by yourself. And I think that this is going to be a great way for you to actually apply the knowledge that you did in step two to where you read the documentation, you, you know, quizzed yourself, you created your own study guide, you understand the concepts, but now you go apply them. And I think that by kind of progressively doing it, you know, maybe first you do it alongside a tutorial, but then practice on your own. And then you go build your own stuff that you're interested in. I think that's a great way to learn a new technology. And I, I do the same thing to this day. Now, when I was also learning to code, I did a few things as well to where I would read books on JavaScript and Python and just basic programming, stuff like that. 
I would also listen to podcasts. So, you know, I do a bunch of podcast interviews on the Code Ryan podcast. So I would listen to podcasts like that just to increase my like knowledge of, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know. So that just exposed myself to a lot other concepts and ideas of stuff like, hey, maybe I also need to go learn this and just kind of fully immersing myself with books, podcasts, you know, courses, tutorials, all that stuff. And, you know, with that, it's also important that you don't go chasing every like shiny object that you see and that you actually learn one technology and then move on to the next. Towards like, if you're learning React and you're doing a project in React, but then you hear about Vue and it's like, oh, this is actually really cool. I'm going to go build a project in that. Well, that's going to really slow down your progression, I think, anyways, because you're kind of hopping from one technology to the next. So if you're learning to code, just know that you don't have to be like this crazy, super genius to do it. I had plenty of times where I felt like, you know, I'm not smart enough to do it, or I would watch a tutorial and I would have no idea what they just talked about. But I think that if you follow this kind of three-step process for learning new things and learning a technology, I think it's going to help you a lot in it you know, would have helped me learn to code. I, I did it in about seven or eight months. I think I could have done it two or three months faster if I would have just followed this approach rather than trying to get through as much content as possible. So I hope this helps and I'll see you in that next one.